Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I hope you can hear me. We are just getting wrapped up from our last event, um, and we will be with you shortly. Okay, we are just getting set up. Give us one second and then we will be ready to go. So thanks everyone for sharing where you are coming from. We have people from so many different places, lots of Alaska, some California, Texas, New Jersey even, it must be really late there. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see, Sarah is our presenter today. Uh, let's see if we can get- Hello everyone. All right. Sarah, are you able to share your screen? Did I give you the right permission? Uh, yes, you, yes, I can share. <laughs> Fantastic. All <laughs> right. We'll give everybody just a second here. It looks like we have lots of people who have made it on, but we'll give people just a minute. Um, and while everybody is getting signed on, if you would like to share in the chat uh, where you are from and maybe if you have um a fact that you already know about sloths or something like that you could share that as well when you are sharing in the chat if you share to all panelists and attendees then you'll share with all of your friends on here and everybody attending if you choose all panelists it will just go to myself and sarah our presenter so feel free to choose either option Ooh, somebody knows that sloths grow mold in their fur. You might have to tell us more about that in a minute. So. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, we lost your screen. There we go. Okay. Uh, we also have a question. Will you have a sloth with you? Would you like Sadly, to no. Uh, partly because it's Oh, I don't even know what time it is right now. It is 8.30 in Costa Rica and it is pitch black. <laughs> uh, 
and I'm currently at my house as well. But I have I have some sloths behind me, like this one, if that counts. There's also not very good Wi-Fi in the jungle, I have to say. So no live sloth, I'm afraid. Me too. My favorite animal is also a sloth fur. <laughs> Obviously. Awesome. All right. Well, we can go ahead and get started. Um, you can't see me on the screen, but my name is Kelly and I work with Girl Scouts of Alaska. Um, and today we have with us Sarah, who is with the Sloth Conservation Foundation, and she's going to share with you some really amazing things about sloths. Um, and I'm very excited to learn even more than I did in the last hour with the younger girls. Yeah, you have to give a big thank you to Miss Kelly because she's definitely gonna be hearing some of the same facts, but they'll be imprinted on your brain. So you're gonna know so much about sloths by the end of this. Um, before we start, because it's not actually in, because what we're gonna, I'm gonna do like a little lesson with you guys to give you some more um, kind of an introduction to sloths. But the algae, the mold is not on there, but it's really, really interesting. So sloth, someone did say that sloths grow mold um, in their fur. Um, it's actually 70 different types of algae and fungus that grows in their fur. And a lot of people think that's because they're really dirty and gross, but actually their hair is specially designed to grow this algae so that it turns them green, they look like a tree, and it makes it easier for them to hide from their predators because it makes them much harder to spot. And the stuff that grows in their fur, the algae, um, it's been studied by scientists and it's amazing. It has loads of medicinal properties, it's antibacterial, it can cure malaria, and it can cure some types of breast cancer. So basically, sloths have a cancer curing ingredient growing on their back it's amazing that is really amazing right <laughs> very bad um girl, amazing. one other thing before we jump all the way in um if you notice you can't see yourselves right now um just sarah we have lots of girls who registered for this webinar um, so right now everybody is muted with their videos off, um, but there will be some chance um, in a little bit to ask questions and things, um, and we will get uh, girls who would like to speak unmuted for that. Um, so right now, don't worry if you can't see yourself, you are logged in correctly still, um, and we will use the raise hand feature and the chat feature to make this as interactive as possible. So um, before we get started, I'll give you a little bit more information about um, kind of what I do um, and the charity. So uh, my name is Sarah, of course. Um, and as you can probably tell, I'm not American. I'm English. <laughs> I I've come from just outside of London, in fact, but I now live all the way over in the ocean um, in Costa Rica. So underneath you guys in the US. And I have been very lucky to be working with sloths for over eight years now. Um, I used to take care of them. Um, I've done research with them. Um, today, for example, we have a photographer from um, Nat Geo here who's taking photos of sloths. So I've been running around in the jungle since seven o'clock this morning finding sloths to photograph. And I think they're stalking me because I can hear one outside my house now. So when the females, they are looking for a boyfriend, they scream and it sounds like, and I can hear that outside my house. And it's it's like they're, they're following me home. <laughs> We're going to do a really quick lesson um, and teach you more about sloths. If you guys have any really important questions during, Miss Kelly can maybe unmute you and you can ask them. But um, if you think of any questions, maybe write them down and we can go through them at the end. But we're going to get started. So get ready, everyone. Let's hope I can make this work. Here we go. Da -da -da. Let's see. So we've got this adorable little sloth starting us off. So here we go. So Miss Kelly has seen this slide already, but it's always good to start here because not everyone knows exactly what a sloth are. Uh, sloth is, sorry. So a sloth is a mammal. So 
I'm sure you guys know what a mammal is. Um, it is the same uh, as us, effectively. And it just means that we're a group. They've got certain characteristics. Um, but the biggest thing about mammals is they have live birth and that they feed their babies from their chest. So sloths, when they do have babies, the baby lives on mum's chest and they suckle from her chest um, on and off throughout the day. But what's really interesting about sloths is we have never been able to find out what their milk is made from because no one has ever got milk from a sloth. They only produce it on demand for their baby. But baby sloths are born live with their eyes open. They're born with their teeth and their claws, which sounds crazy because how is a baby survive? Well, how is the baby not hurting mum with those claws from the inside, right? They live in kind of when they're a baby, like a little, um, uh, their claws have sheaths over over them. So it stops them poking, poking poor mum. And when they're born, I highly recommend that you guys try and find this video. They basically do a bungee jump. So when they are born in the trees, their umbilical cord, they, the mum doesn't catch them in time sometimes. And so they kind of just ping out of her and bungee jump from the umbilical cord. That's the first activity they do, bungee jumping. <laughs> now, sloths only live in Central and South America, so underneath where you are. So they live in a, from a country called Honduras all the way down to Brazil, so it's quite a big area. And there are two main types of sloths. So in English, they are called the wrong name, so we refuse to use it. So they are called two-toed, and three-toed in English, but it's wrong because every species of sloth has three toes. The difference is on their hands. So as you can see this beautiful swimming sloth, you can see three claws on their hand. This is the three-fingered sloth or the bradipus, and then the two-fingered is the one with the two claws, the one with the piggy nose. They are incredibly different animals. Um, they evolved separately from each other 30 million years ago so a super long time ago and they're completely different they've um they're so far apart in evolution and it means that we are more closely related to the monkeys the baboons the ones that live in africa they have a really bright red colorful bottom than the sloths are to each other so this is why they're quite different and why they look quite different because they're so far apart in evolution so this is the beautiful two-fingered sloth, my favorite. Don't tell the three-fingered, they'll get jealous. <laughs> they have that really cute piggy nose, like I said. Um, they have the two claws. Uh, they range anywhere from a white, white blonde to like a black brown color. And then you have the three-fingered. They look so different, right? They've got that cute little button nose, the raccoon eye mask. And then they've obviously got the three fingers. There's so many more differences um, to them, but that's just a couple of little obvious ones that you can look at. But yeah, they are very str strange and very different because they've evolved separately for a long time. This is what you actually call, or we call it convergent evolution. So it's where two animals have ended up living very similar lifestyles, but they're really far apart in evolution. So poor Miss Kelly has seen this slide as well, but it's very funny. I love this. <laughs> I love this section. So sloth myths or sloth fake news, because there are honestly the amount of questions I get asked about sloths. Um, that's just the craziest things I've ever heard. One of my favorites isn't on here, but I've only ever been asked this once. Is there a snake that protects sloths? No, there isn't, by the way. Um, but that was a question I got asked one time. Um, my favorite question that I get asked all the time is, do sloths mistake their arms for tree branches and fall out of the tree? Now, this somehow became a fact. It's in a book called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now, you might not have heard or read that book, but there is a movie as well. And the author wrote this about sloths in his book. And now everyone thinks it's a real thing. It's not true. Everyone thinks sloths are really stupid, but they're not, I promise you. So people do honestly believe though that sloths are climbing around in the trees and then they grab onto their arm instead of a branch and then they fall out of the tree. It's not true, I promise you. One of the biggest uh, myths about sloths, and this is a fair one, I would say, for, to think that sloths are lazy. 
Sloths aren't lazy. Um, we're going to talk about it in a minute, about why they're really slow, why they're chilled out. Um, it's mostly due to energy. So they don't have a lot of energy. So instead of running around everywhere like a monkey, they're very relaxed, the most chilled out animal on earth, basically. And I think we can learn a lot from sloths because our lives are so crazy. They're so busy. But I think that sloths have been around for just what we said, over 30 million years. So clearly they're doing something right. Maybe we should be living a bit more of a more relaxed lifestyle as well. Um, but in other languages, every single language uh, in French, their name is Pareso. In Spanish, it's Perezoso. And each of those names means lazy or lazy bear. So poor sloths, they don't have a very, uh, didn't have a very good start in life. And their first ever written description, so the first person to write about sloths, uh, said that they were basically uh, the most useless and ugliest animal in the world, um, which I think is very unfair, personally. And I hope you agree. So I just mentioned that in Spanish, their name means lazy bear. Um, we're going to see what the sloth ancestors are a little bit later, but they're not related to monkeys, despite the fact they live in trees, and they're not related to bears, even though the two-fingered looks a little bit like a bear. Um, we're going to meet what their ancestors are a bit later, but yeah, not monkeys, not bears. This is quite a funny one as well, that people think that sloths are drunk. So kind of like they've drunk a little bit too much wine. <laughs> um, I suppose it would make sense if they were drunk and mistaking their arms for tree branches. That would Those two would go quite well together. But sloths eat leaves and there are um, what we call a toxin in those leaves. And it would normally build up in their system to kind of cause this drunkenness. But because their digestion's so slow, it processes the leaves properly. Um, a lot of people think this is true for koalas as well because of the eucalyptus leaves that they eat, but it's not true for sloth or koalas. And no, this is a surprising fact. No, sloths do not sleep for 20 hours. Um, it says online that they sleep about 18 to 20 hours a day, but it's not true. It's, it's half of that, basically. It's eight to 10 hours a day they sleep on average. Um, and they won't sleep one full eight hours or 10 hours like we would. They'll sleep for a few hours, wake up and eat, go back to sleep for a few hours. Um, but they are um, inactive. So they're kind of like not moving around about 80% of the day. So like I said, they're very chilled out. Um, koalas, by the way, do sleep 20 hours. They're kind of like the Australian sloth. And then tigers, which I think is the laziest animal in the world, sleep 22 hours a day, up to 22 hours. So that means they might only be awake for two hours of the day. How do people think sloths are lazy? Tigers are way lazier. <laughs> So these are the species of sloth that live in the world, I guess. As we said, they only live in Central and South America. So two types of two-fingered sloth and four types of three-fingered sloth. Now, they do live in lots of countries. So, so the Hoffman's two-fingered, which is the one in orange, you can find in Costa Rica. They live in Panama, Bolivia, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay. Um, Honduras and, and others. So they live in quite a lot of countries, even though um, they only live in two kind of main areas. And these are the one of the most famous sloths. So the this is Ali and Jessica in that photo, by the way. You, they're adoptable and they're ones that we worked with. Um, they are some of our research sloths and they're super, super beautiful. Um, you can see these sometimes in zoos if you have a zoo near you, but the most common one you're gonna see is the one in blue. That's the other type of two-fingered sloth. They only live in South America. Um, and they're much, much, you see they're much, much darker. Um, but yeah, that's the one if you have a zoo nearby, um, they might have that type of sloth there if you wanna go and visit them. Then I said there's the four types of three-fingered sloth. So the one in yellow is the most famous type of sloth in the world. Now you're not gonna find these guys in a zoo because they are incredibly difficult to look after. There's only one zoo in the US that has them. And it's the Dallas World Aquarium in Texas. And they have to fly their leaves in from Hawaii to feed them because they have such a specialized diet. So if you wanna see these guys, highly recommend you come for a little visit to Costa Rica because you'll see lots and lots of them today. In fact, we were photographing a mum and baby today and they were very, very cute. 
Um, the other types of sloth are really special. Um, they're much more, um, the populations are much smaller. So the one in green lives in South America. It's called the pale throated sloth. They've got that weird little yellow face and a yellow neck. Then you've got the one that looks like a coconut. So we have a calendar with sloths on and I've just taken the main sloth photo off of my calendar and it's been my calendar since January, my calendar photo because they make me smile every single time I see them because they do just look like a coconut and they have this beautiful mane of hair. And these guys are, for a three-fingered sloth, they are really aggressive and they're the biggest type as well. They can get up to 10 kilos, which is around the same size as the two-fingered sloths, which are much bigger. So they're a really cool species. And they only live in a tiny, tiny forest area in Brazil. Um, and I don't know if you guys know much about Brazil, but there is a lot of um, problems there because people are chopping down the rainforest. And this is why this this sloth, the main sloth, the coconut, um, is, is a vulnerable species now. So sadly, there's not too many of them left. And next year, we are starting a research project with them. So we're going to be tracking and monitoring them, which is super exciting. So we get to go to Brazil, which is going to be fun. And then the most special of all the sloths, the one in pink. So this is the pygmy sloth. This is the one that if you see photos of sloths swimming, it's these guys because they live on an island and there's patches of forest that they swim between. And these sloths are really weird because they eat a type of tree called a mangrove. And the mangrove tree, its roots grow in salt water so they're eating like salty leaves. So they've evolved a way to digest these leaves. And they've been living on this island independently for millions of years. And there's only about a hundred of them in existence. So they are one of the most endangered animals in the whole world. And they're about 40% smaller than the, the, yellow, the one in yellow, the brown throated sloth. So they're a really cute little species. So, this is the ancestor of the sloth and it is such a weird animal. So this is called the giant ground sloth or the megatherium. And these guys really do look kind of more like a bear, right? The biggest one was over 20 feet tall and it weighed two tons. So it was absolutely massive. And these guys were around from about 60 million years ago. And we think the most recent one was only 4,000 years ago, the very last one. So they've been around for a really long time and they were around at the same time as the sloths in the trees as well. And these guys obviously being so big, they can't climb trees, but can you see what that one's doing? He's kind of resting on his tail and he's got his feet on the floor. They'd rear up like that and to pull leaves out of the trees because they did eat leaves as well. And they ate avocados. This is one of the coolest things I think you're going to learn today. I think it's cool anyway. So if you like avocados, you can thank the giant ground sloth because this was one of the very few animals that could eat the whole thing. So you know the seed uh, in the avocado is huge. We can't eat them, right? The megatherium could. And then they pooed that seed all throughout Central and South America. So if you like guacamole, thank the giant ground sloth. There you go. So remember when I said that sloths were related to two very different animals? They weren't monkeys or bears. They are related to two animals, firstly, the beautiful anteaters. Um, so these guys are a little bit more closer together in evolution. They're about uh, 80 million years apart, still a very long time. And th this, this animal, the two types of sloth and the armadillo, so I saw again, people from Texas, you guys have probably seen these, this animal before. This is the sloth family, anteaters, armadillos, and the two types of sloth. And they're part of a really special grouping. It's called Xenarthrans, which you've probably never heard that word before, but in Greek, it means strange joints because anteaters, armadillos, and sloths have extra bones in their back that no other animal has. So this is why they're part of this very special group, uh, anteaters, armadillos, and sloths. It's like their little, their little family. So I said in the myths area, we were going to talk about why sloths were so slow. 
And I saw some people ask this as well in the chat before we started. So here we go. I'm going to answer your question. So sloth, very simply, sloths are what we call foliovores and they eat leaves, which is, an, is not very nutritional as a food source. Uh, we have a very high energy diet because we eat lots and lots of different types of things. But leaves, there's really not a lot of um, calories or nutrition in them. Now, there are other animals that eat just leaves, like the howler monkey. And you really can't compare sloths and howler monkeys together because monkeys are crazy, right? They're always running around. Um, it's because they eat so much. So they eat tons and tons of leaves throughout the day. Whereas sloths um, can't eat very much because it takes nearly a whole month to digest one single leaf. They have a really big stomach. So if you think about on you, from your chest down to your hips, that's how big their stomach are. It's, that's how big their stomach is. It's four chambered like a cow's and it takes you yeah, 28 to 30 days to process through those four chambers. So their stomachs are always full. So they could only really eat little bits throughout the day. Um, we had a question in the last group, which was how much do they eat? And it's not very much at all. It's uh, what we call, what we would say 20 grams of dried weight. So it's about the size of a small chip packet. So nothing, basically. And this is one of my favorite things about sloth. Um, and I know that kids love to talk about poo. So we're going to talk about poo because <laughs> sloths only go for a poo once a week. Now, think how many times you go to the toilet in the week, right? I assume most of you are going more than once a week. Otherwise, you might want to tell your mom to go take you to a doctor. But sloths only go one time every week. And the reason for this, their digestion slow, it takes a long time, and they have the strangest behavior ever. So they live in trees, but they don't poo from the tree. So what they do is they come all the way down the tree, which is really dangerous for them, and it wastes a lot of energy, but they do it anyway. And they come down to the tree, and we still don't really know why they do it, but we think it's to do with finding a boyfriend because when the females are looking for a man they come down every single day so they're using their poo to scent mark so the males can smell the hormones and so that they can find out what tree the lady is in and that's that's how they find they find a girlfriend basically but it is a bit of a strange behavior either way although I suppose it's kind of hard to find a boyfriend when you're up in a tree trying to hide from a predator now, what they do is, is they do a poo dance. So I'll ask Miss Kelly again if she can uh, maybe send you the link. I'll try and find the link when we get off the chat of a sloth doing a poo dance because it is the cutest thing and the funniest thing you'll ever see because they hold onto the tree and then they're wiggling their butts around like they're doing a little dance and they poo and wee in those holes and lose up to a third of their body weight at a time. So imagine on you if you did a poo this size, it would be the size of your head down to your chest. That's how big it would be. So it's a very big poo, 30%. So like a six kilo sloth, it would be a two kilo poo, for example. So these are the sloth predators we're gonna talk about very quickly because they do have two natural predators. The first one is um, my favorite, it is the harpy eagle. And they're this crazy looking massive bird. It's the biggest eagle in the world. They have a two meter or a six foot across wingspan. And they eat things like sloths, monkeys, um, opossums. They're like catching them out of the tree. They're very, very strong. Their claws are huge. Like they would fit around a whole human's head. It's the size of a grizzly bear. But sloths sometimes are stronger than the eagles. They are so strong sloths that sometimes harpy eagles have to give up pulling them out of the trees because the sloths are so strong they can stay gripping onto the tree even when that harpy eagle is trying to pull it away. And then the other main predator of a sloth is these beautiful jaguars. So you guys might have heard of jaguars before or maybe you've seen leopards, which are the ones in Africa. They're very, very similar but obviously leopards live in Africa and the jaguar lives in the Americas. It is the third biggest cat in the whole world and they have the most powerful bite of any big cat. So better than a lion, better than a tiger, 
They're really, really strong. And you can also see videos of them on YouTube uh, trying to attack a crocodile, which sounds nuts because crocodiles are terrifying. So yeah, these are the two main predators of the sloth, but the biggest predator, humans. Now, sadly, this is very true of lots of animals. We are a huge threat to wildlife. Um, it, it's not just one main thing that humans do that affect animals. Um, we're gonna talk obviously specifically about sloth, but a lot of these do, um, a lot of these are also problems for other animals as well. So deforestation is a really big problem uh, for wild animals because of course they live in the forest. We have our houses, sloths have trees. So when people come down and chop down the trees to use uh, to build stuff or because they wanna build a town or a house or whatever, they're chopping down the areas that these animals live in so they don't have a home anymore. So that's a really big problem. Then to get around from place to place, we have to build roads, of course, because we've got cars and it's the quickest way to get around. But of course, a road for an animal is super dangerous. And especially when they've got no trees to get around anymore, if you come to Costa Rica, you are incredibly likely to see a sloth cross a road, which sounds crazy, but it happens all of the time here. And of course, the cars are driving so fast, the sloths are so slow, it's very dangerous for them. Um, we're gonna talk about ways that we try and combat this in a minute, but yeah, roads are a big problem. The next two, the power lines and the dogs, are the two biggest causes of death for sloths in the wild. So again, kind of a knock on effect from deforestation and us building around the sloths. Sloths are using power cables to get around from area to area and they don't insulate them here. So that means, that the cables are protected by something. And these cables are very high voltage. So when the sloths touch them, they get electrocuted. So it kills in the wild in Costa Rica around 50% of the animals that live in trees. So it is a huge, huge problem. Then dogs are the second biggest issue. Now, a lot of people Poor cats. A lot of people are always going on about how cats are really bad for wildlife because they kill lots of birds, they kill lots of lizards and things like that. Dogs are worse than cats. They have actually made 12 species go extinct already and they kill hundreds of sloths and other animals um, every single year. Um, it's because a lot of places uh, like in South and Central America, there are stray and wild dogs running around. But a lot of people don't really care for their animals how we do. Um, they're running around on their own. Um, they get hit by cars all the time as well, which is really sad. But because they're not supervised, they're attacking and killing a lot of wildlife. They're also making lots of babies, which means there's more animals on the street. So it's not the dog's fault at all. Um, that's their natural instinct to attack the animal. But it's it, the problem is humans not taking care of them, basically. And then these two kind of go together as well. This is the selfie and the pet trade. Unfortunately, if you go on Instagram, the number one thing that you are gonna see is people hugging sloths and taking photos. And don't get me wrong, I wanna spend all day hugging sloths. Like I would love to do that. But unfortunately, sloths really don't like it. Um, they are a wild animal, so they don't like being picked up and touched and handled. But particularly sloths, they're very sensitive. Um, they live on their own in the wild, so they don't really socialize anyway, not like a monkey. And they just don't like being picked up and touched. It's really, really stressful for them. And it's the same with the pet trade. These animals are taken from the wild to fuel the pet trade, to fuel the selfie trade. So we always ask you a big, big ask, please always say no to having a pet sloth or to holding a sloth for a photo because it's really bad for them and they're taken from the wild, which is where they should be. It's not all depressing, I promise you. We're gonna get from the less depressing thing now. We're gonna talk about how we can make changes to help the sloth. So this is my charity does. So the Sloth Conservation Foundation, um, it was started four years ago by myself and Dr. Becky Cliff. So Becky is the girl in the photo and the scientific research. And she's super cool because she is the only person in the world to have a PhD in sloth. She literally, she has a PhD in sloth and she's, so she's Dr. Sloth. <laughs> um, and she is the world expert in sloth. She's only 30 
and she started this whole conservation charity um, to try and protect sloths in the wild, wild, sorry. So we do scientific research. So it could be monitoring sloth behavior. It could be right now we're tracking rescue sloths um, that were orphaned, hand raised in a rescue center and then released in the wild. We're tracking them to make sure they're okay. So we do lots of research projects like that. We help with the deforestation by planting lots and lots and lots of trees. And actually this is something you can do at home as well. Even if you plant one tree, it's really helpful for the planet. We plant lots of sloth friendly trees. So normally we call them feeder trees. So it's lots of trees that animals like to eat from. Then for the, for the doggies, this is one of my kind of my babies because I have two rescue dogs from the street here in Costa Rica. So um, they are street puppies that I've rescued, but there is a big problem, as we said, with the stray dogs. So what we do is we help catch and um, release uh, the, the stray dogs, but we neuter and spay them so they can't create more street puppies, uh, which is a really good uh, project. Now, this is a really cool one. So remember I was saying about how it's really hard for sloths to cross roads. What we do instead is we build bridges for them. So we tie a rope from tree to tree up in, up in the canopy so the sloths can cross safely rather than coming all the way down. So if any of you like tree climbing, this uh, one of the people that works for us, he goes like 50 meters up in a really big tree uh, to tie up these ropes, which I find really scary, but he is amazing. He gets up a big tree in about a minute. It's, cra it's ridiculous. Then we, we do a lot of responsible tourism. So this is more about the selfie and the pet trade, trying to teach people that sloths belong in the wild, not, not in people's homes and definitely not for a photo opportunity. So that's a big thing we do. And then what we're doing right now, so education. So normally I'm going into schools in Costa Rica, but of course, as many of you know, it's been a bit of a different year to this year. But I've been really fortunate to be able to do lots of amazing Zooms like this with you guys. So we've had an amazing year talking to lots of people about sloths and making them passionate about protecting them and the wildlife. So this is this is what I do basically most, most of the time. And these are little ways that you guys can help. So right from your home. And these are little helping things that you can do, not just for sloths, but they also help lots of other animals and the planet as well and the environment. So the planet is actually uh, running out of water. So in places like South Africa, they have to limit people's water now because there's not enough left in their country. So saving water is a really important thing you can do. And one of the easiest things you can do, take shorter showers. So like take a three minute, five minute shower rather than a 20 minute one. So that's one nice, easy one you can do. Um, another one to help the climate, um, don't try not to, uh, well, try and car share where possible rather than everyone driving in separate cars. And if you can, even better, use your bicycle to get around if you have one. So that's how everyone in where I live in Puerto Viejo, that's how they get around. Everyone has a bike here and we're cycling along the beach in the forest. It's very beautiful. Um, another good one, uh, trying not to use as much plastic. So this is a very big problem for the environment. Lots and lots of plastic bottles and lots of other plastic things everywhere. And it takes a really long time to break down. So whenever you want to drink, if you can get a reusable bottle that you can fill up, it actually helps the planet even just a little bit. Um, recycling and making sure you don't throw your, your trash on the street is another super, super easy one. And this is, this is my favorite one. Um, because normally when I talk about this, uh, a lot of people ask me, well, how does eating less meat help save sloths? Because obviously you're not eating sloths, which I hope no one would want to do anyway. But it really does help because most of the cattle or the, the meat that we eat is produced in the rainforest where sloths live. So remember we talked about that their homes being chopped down. So this is the number one reason why the rainforest is chopped down. It is to produce meat um, and also the food that the animals need to eat. So the food for the cows like grains. So even eating one less meal a week without meat in, even doing one day, one week, um, anything is actually super helpful because the end result will end up being less trees chopped down in the sloth's home or buying locally is a really good thing to do as well. 
Um, we've kind of talked about it, promising not to take part in the sloth selfie trade. So always say no to that. And then the easiest one to do, share the sloth love. Tell everyone you know about how amazing sloths are and stuff you learned today and ways that you can help the sloth. Um, that, that's one of the easiest things to do. Uh, and we want as many people to want to protect these animals as possible. So even if you don't do anything else on that list, tell one person why they should protect sloths and you're going to help them. So that's it for our little presentation, guys. Uh, I hope you learned some new cool things about sloths. Um, and we're going to come back to the Zoom now. Uh, and I will answer your questions. I hope you guys have lots of good questions. Hold on. Did we enjoy that, everyone? There's been lots of yeses and sloth love in the chat. Well, hopefully Miss Kelly learned some new stuff and wasn't too bored by the previous facts. <laughs> no, I think it's great. Um, we have a bunch of questions that have been typed in the Q&A. Um, so I might just start at the top if that works for you. Yeah, perfect. So the first question is, are sloths dinosaurs? No, sadly. Um, so the animal, the giant ground sloth, it doesn't count as a as a a dinosaur, it's megafauna. Another another example of the animals that lived at the same time as the giant ground sloth is the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger. So I'm sure some of you guys have seen Ice Age. Sid the sloth in that is meant to be a ground sloth, but he's a very bad ground sloth. Um, I love Sid, but he's not a correct ground sloth. But they're the, they're the animals in Ice Age are basically the animals that lived at the same time as the giant ground sloth. Cool. But we should bring, I think we should bring dinosaurs back personally. I'm so for Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next question is, isn't it said, oh, isn't it said that sloths are slow so that they blend in with the trees and predators can't get them? <gasps> You're so smart. Yes, uh, this is another reason why they're slow. Um, I didn't add it because it's a little bit more longer and more complicated, but yeah, absolutely. Um, this is this is a really clever way. Sloths don't really have defenses. They can't run away. They can't really like attack an animal. So their main defense is to hide. So remember I said that their predators are the jaguar and the harpy eagle. These animals hunt visually. So if you imagine there's a monkey running past on a branch, they're like, ooh, dinner, right? They can see that really quickly. But then you've got a sloth that's kind of moving along the branch like this. They're upside down as well, so they're under the branch. They're kind of, yeah, moving like a tree, kind of swaying. They're camouflaged in with the tree because of the algae that I mentioned, so it's really hard to spot them. So yeah, absolutely, it's a really clever adaptation as well to hide from their predators. Cool. What is their favorite thing to do? <laughs> uh, they have a couple of favorite things. They love to scratch. So they'll scratch for like 20 minutes in a go and they'll be hanging from one arm and one leg. And then they're just usually like scratching like this for like 20 minutes with their eyes closed, looking really happy. They do love to eat as well when they can. Um, and th they do like to sleep, but on and off. Nice. Um, the next question is, are there sloths in the Henley Dorley Zoo in Nebraska? I don't know if you know the answer to that, but maybe there are zoos that have sloths. I don't know if that zoo does. Um, the best thing to do, I'd say for that is Google the, the zoo name and sloth or send them a message on Facebook and ask if they have sloths because um, the zoos are pretty good and they'll get back to you. Cool. There's lots of zoos in America. I don't know all of them that have sloths. <laughs> yeah, I've been to the Anchorage Zoo and we do not have sloths. I think they oh, okay. would um the next question is what type of leaves are shipped from hawaii to texas for sloths to eat i think that they ship the sacropia leaf which is um the favorite food of the of the sloth of the three-fingered sloth and it's like um the tree is like a really thin trunk and it goes up super super high and yeah it's got beautiful fan-shaped leaves but yeah they have to ship that's the nearest place that they can ship the leaves in that they eat because they have a very specific diet 
Um, there's also a question. I heard sloths eat hibiscus flowers. Is that true? They do. We call it sloth chocolate. <laughs> they love hibiscus flowers and they're beautiful flowers. Humans can eat them as well, by the way. But always make sure to check with your parents first that it's a hibiscus flower. Don't go around eating random flowers. Um, they they do love hibiscus flowers. Um, and we, yeah, we call it sloth chocolate. They go wild for them. Nice. Uh, do you have a favorite type of sloth? I do. I the two fingered. Um, I like I said. I'm a little bit in love with the main sloth now because they just make me so happy looking at their faces. But the two fingered, the the Hoffmans, the one we have here in Costa Rica, is a hundred percent my favorite. Their piggy noses, like they're just the cutest little face, and they're so feisty. I love the feisty animals. They make you earn their respect and they've got, a, yeah, they're, they're feisty and uh, got a lot of personality. Nice. Um, how long do sloths live? This is a really good question because we don't know. <laughs> You'd think you knew, would know this answer, right? But it's sloths have only been kept in captivity for the last 50 years and most of them are still alive. So the oldest sloth in the world, she just, she got a Guinness world record for it last year she turned 51 51 in june but she lives in germany and she did sadly pass away in august this year but there is another sloth i think it's the next oldest in tulsa zoo which is um 43 and they was they still go into heat every month so that it means they can still have babies so we do think that somewhere in the jungle there is a hundred year old sloth somewhere wow yeah that's, that's an old sloth yeah um we've had a few more questions about zoos and whether it's good or bad to have sloths in a zoo like san diego these quite that's a really good question so i always especially especially in the us there are some interesting zoos is probably a nice way to put it i highly recommend that if you want to go to a zoo to see a sloth always 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 make sure that they are aza accredited um there's a list online that you can see at san diego is one by the way um aza accredited is really important that means that those zoos have very high protocols for their animals um to look after them so they're good places to go to for animals and if you are going to a zoo always make sure that they don't have a program where they let you hold sloths that's always a big no-no. If they do that, it's not a good, it's not a good zoo, is my tips. Tip, tip for the zoos. Good. Um, how many sloths live in the world? Um, again, like the age, we still don't know this because no population study has ever been done. Um, because of course, that's really difficult. Imagine, remember, the sloths are hiding all the time. And most of the time they're up a really tall tree in a tiny little ball, which looks like a termite nest, um, although it's a sloth. Um, so it's hard to kind of do a population study. The ones that have been studied are the main sloth, the one in Brazil and the pygmy sloth, because those are very endangered species. So they're trying to find out how much of their population is left. But what I will tell you is there are lots and lots and lots of sloths that need rescuing. So that means they're injured because of the roads, the power lines, the mums might have been killed, so the babies have, have to be raised in a rescue center. Hundreds of sloths where I live every year this happens to. So while their population is okay at the moment, in the next 10 to 15 years, if changes aren't made, they're gonna be in very big trouble. Um, which is what we're trying to prevent basically um because they have the possibility of going extinct so that that means there's none left ever in the wild um it, within our lifetime basically so in the next 60 years it's crunch time for the sloth yeah. sounds like it um well i don't know if you know anything about cats but there's a question do, do, you like, do you like cats too and what is the biggest cat in the world uh, I love cats. Um, I uh, cats are amazing. Biggest cat in the world. I I, know, I feel I should know this. So I know the jaguar is the third biggest. I'm trying to think what's bigger than a jaguar. I think tigers are really big. Um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> but 
I think tigers and lions are the next biggest. Um, I th leopards are a little smaller than jaguars. I think it's jaguars, tigers, lions, maybe. I might be forgetting one, but I think it's in that order. Lions are second, there we go. Does anybody know what number one is? Was I right with tigers? Yes. Tigers were going to be my my guess as well, and it it looks yeah. like you might be on the right right page. No, there. I love big cats. I love cats. Um, cheetahs are my favorite. I have to say, they're like weird dogs, even though they're cats. <laughs> um, on the other end of the size spectrum, how big are their babies? Um, I used this to demonstrate earlier. They're about this big. So about the size of a glasses case, a glasses case, about 200 to 300 grams when they're born. So teeny tiny. And how many do they have at a time? Usually one, but they can have twins. But I don't know if you guys know this, normally even when humans have twins, one twin is always bigger. So they've taken more nutrients in the womb and it's the same with sloth. So one baby, that one twin will be much weaker, much smaller, and it won't be able to stay because the sloths have to cling to their mum's chest. The baby will keep falling and the mum will try and come down for it, but she doesn't have the energy to keep coming down if the baby keeps falling. It's putting herself at risk. And also if the baby can't stay on her chest, it stays there for nearly a year, she can't teach it. So eventually she'll stop coming down for that baby. So we do get quite a lot of twins um, that we have to rescue because they've, um, mums had to leave them unfortunately and just keep one of the babies. Lots of twins. I always wanted to be a twin when I was little. Um, I really, really wanted to do that, be, it, be a twin. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, are sloths social or like humans? They're very different to humans. Um, they're not social at all. Um, it's because, uh, remember we talked about them trying to hide from predators. If you have a big group of animals together, it's super obvious to a predator where you are, right? If you've got four sloths in a tree next to each other, you're gonna be easy to spot compared to one sloth. So they stay away from each other except for when they mate or have a baby. Um, just to protect themselves. But um, in a rescue center situation, they do, when they grow up together, they become best friends. Uh, and it's like having a brother or a sister, basically. And they do love each other, which I, it makes me really sad because they do like each other. They just have to stay away from each other for, for, for their own protection. Hmm. Um, there was another question about... Um... Do sloths need people to donate money to help them? And if so, is there a website where um, girls or families can donate to help sloths? So if this is the thing, you guys don't have to donate. You can help by doing some of the things that I suggested. But if you are able to donate, absolutely. We always could use funding to help our projects. So um, I'm, I'm sure Miss Kelly can share it with you. But uh, if you go to www slothconservation.org that's my foundation's website and you can uh, donate to plant trees you can get you can um, get your own canopy crossing you can adopt a sloth um, lots and lots of different things basically um, and we all we are always grateful for anyone that wants to fundraise for us or do or donate because all of the all of the money that we get helps save sloths in the wild so if you're able to amazing if you're not able to take take short showers <laughs> tell people why you love sloths and i just want to clarify that by when you say adopt a sloth you don't mean actually getting a sloth no sadly you don't get a sloth we'd get in a lot of trouble trying to mail you a sloth from costa rica <laughs> it's a symbolic adoption so you get like a packet um either delivered to your house depending on which one you get or or by email of your chosen sloth with a picture a biography a certificate and stuff like that awesome um uh, let's see <laughs> do sloths drink water so this is a really cool question because until about three years ago everyone thought that sloths didn't drink water 
but they do. Um, and we only know this because people have seen them drinking from the rivers. So normally they get a lot of their water content from the leaves that they eat. But when it gets super, super hot, they'll come down to the rivers, um, like they'll hang off a vine and they'll like lap the water up. So yes, they do drink water, but we've only found that out recently, which is really cool. Hmm. Very neat. Um, what do sloths mostly do in a day if they don't sleep for 24 hours? They, uh, they scratch a lot. Remember, they like to scratch. They'll move from tree to tree. They'll eat quite a, quite a bit. They eat kind of little and often. So they'll eat a little bit and then they'll maybe move somewhere else and then they'll eat a little bit more. Um, if they have a baby, um, she'll be teaching the baby what trees to eat from. Uh, they might be coming down for a poo. They might be trying to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend, uh, but mostly sleeping, eating and scratching and chilling. They like to chill as well. <laughs> awesome. Um, why do slots scream to get a male? Uh, <laughs> so it's really hard to find a boyfriend when you're living at the top of a tree, solitary and trying your best to hide from a predator, right? That's gonna be difficult. So it's only the female three-fingered sloths that do it. And when they go into heat, they'll scream, uh, like the, 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 one, the noise I made earlier there. <laughs> and they'll, it will get more frequent throughout that week that she's kind of in heat. And you can hear it nearly, uh, nearly a mile away. That's how far away you can hear it. And the boys are like, oh, there's a lady. And what they'll do is they'll start moving towards where the noise is coming from, but they're like, what tree is she in? So this is where they use the poo. So when they come down and they're in heat, they'll do it once a day for a week because they're leaving uh, what we call pheromones in that uh, poo and wee. So when the males are trying to find out what on, where on earth she is, they come across her poo and they're like, she's in this tree. And up they go. <laughs> Very neat. Uh, there's a question, can sloths get diabetes or are there maybe other illnesses that sloths get? I don't know if they can get diabetes. I just don't think it's really been studied, um, but they didn't think that they could get cancer until about seven-ish years ago, and they can. They can get most diseases um, that mammals get. Um, but what's really interesting about sloths is, so they're not able to regulate their body temperature like we are um, and they can their body temperature is quite low and it means they can't incubate diseases so things like rabies they can't get um, so they actually there's a lot of diseases they can't get because their body temperature is so low the virus or the disease basically can't um i can't think of the word mutate and like grow as a disease inside them all right. Um, let's see. Have you ever eaten a hibiscus flower? And if you have, what do they taste like? So the one <laughs> they don't they they don't taste amazing. Uh, they can be a little. Um, they basically taste like a plant. Uh, like if you would eat any kind of leaf or a plant. There are other types that are kind of sweeter, which are the proper type of hibiscus. They're more like the ones that you get in Hawaii. They're called um, Rosa de Jamaica, which is like flower of Jamaica. But you can make a uh, tea with it and it tastes like cranberry. Hmm, interesting. And I use it to flavor water. Nice. It's, like a dry, it's like a dried version though. Mm -hmm. To follow up on the illnesses, um, the girls want to know if sloths can get COVID-19. We really don't know. Um, I think no. Um, there are some animals that are at risk. Monkeys are a really big um, worry. So one of the rescue centers we work with, they had to be incredibly strict um, with their workers because the monkeys that we work with already, they do pick up respiratory diseases from us anyway. So uh, this is why they always, they've always worn masks with the younger monkeys because they can pick up those um, like coughs and colds and it's really dangerous for them when they're babies. So I, the monkeys definitely are at risk of that, but I don't know about sloths. I feel like again, they might not be able to incubate and they can't, they don't cough 
or anything like that. They don't have that ability. So I don't think that they could get that, but they can get other stuff. Interesting. Um, what colors are sloths? So the three fingered sloths are gray, basically, uh, like black and white uh, fur. And then the three, uh, sorry, the two fingered sloth, uh, they are the whitest snow blonde that you've ever seen. That's the lightest that they get. And then the darkest ones are almost like black brown. So they, they're like our hair. They range in colors. Awesome. Um, what do you do at your job daily to help sloths? My day is different every single day. Um, so today, for example, I was out with the photographer, um, but most of the stuff that I do uh, is, is education stuff. So what I'm trying to do is uh, inspire the sloth scientists of the future. That's what I like to say anyway. Um, I, like I said, I mostly work um, in schools in Costa Rica, but we're trying to teach people about the wildlife because we don't just, when we teach, we don't just talk usually about sloths. We talk about a lot of other wildlife, but also a lot of the things that we do, we try and um, it, it helps lots of other animals. So you guys are so important because you're our next generation and making you guys passionate about these animals and passionate about protecting the environment and the world is so important. So this is one of the biggest things I do, but I also do other stuff like I do sloth tracking and research. I do tree planting. It really depends on the day, but my biggest thing is, is talking to people like you. Awesome. Well, we continue to get more questions um, and I'm happy to read more, um, but we are also at about an hour into the presentation. So I'm not sure what your timeline is, if you have a few more minutes or if you- No, I have a few more minutes, that's fine. Okay, fantastic. Um, Ah, oh, this is a fun one. Uh, can sloths fart? Um, they, they, I have never heard a sloth fart. Um, they also can't vomit either. Um, so they're, they're so weird. Uh, <laughs> no, um, they don't technically fart, um, like we do and, and cows do. All right. Um, Another question about your job. What do you have yeah. to do to get a job helping sloths? Um, there's lots of ways you can do it. And it really depends on kind of what area you want to go into. So if you want to do research on sloths and, um, and do biology and things like that, then you obviously need to go down like the more of the education path. So going to university and studying zoology or biology um, and then working with the sloths doing research publishing papers and stuff like that. If you want to work with them uh, more physically, like raising sloths um, and taking care of them, highly recommend going into wildlife veterinary uh, work. If I could go back in time, I would become a wildlife vet. It's amazing work. Um, I actually wanted to do it when I was a kid, but I thought I wouldn't be able to cope with the animals dying. And it is really sad. But seeing an animal go from really sick and injured to being released back in the wild is one of the most fantastic things ever. So that's really, really cool. Um, you can also um, just volunteer. So when you're a bit older, like the rescue center we work with takes volunteers so you can help raise sloths and look after them there. Um, you can also, it's a bit more boring, but do the administration side of things. So um, lots of big charities need people working for them, but you won't necessarily be working with sloths. So if you want to work with them, you want to go down the research or veterinary path. Fantastic. Um, I've had a couple of questions of what kind of sloth is our mascot. And I'm thinking that that question is around the Girl Scout fall product program this year. Every uh, fall product program, we have an animal mascot. And this year's mascot is the pygmy sloth, I believe. Oh, so. good choice, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, is there a sloth you have not seen? A kind of sloth? Oh, the type. I, I've actually only seen, how many have I seen now? One, two, three, four. Four of the six types. Um, I haven't seen the main sloth, uh, the, the coconut, <laughs> but I will next year because we're going to Brazil and I'm so excited. Um, and I haven't seen the pale throated sloth, the one with the yellow face. They're the two that I've not met yet. That's cool. 
Uh, let's see. Can only three clawed sloths swim? They are better swimmers. So the two finger sloth can do short distances, um, but the three fingered sloth are much better and they can go for much longer. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Do female sloths ever reject male sloths? <laughs> All of the time. <laughs> um especially when they have a baby so when they have a baby they've got their hands full you're raising a little one right so you need to put your full attention on that baby sometimes the males will try and um uh, mate with her and she'll fight him off um so that's i've seen sloths fight before it's really interesting uh but yeah they they will reject them all of the time well, gotta be choosy <laughs> true um, the other question I have is why are sloths so cute to me? I'm not sure you can answer that, but I think they are cute to a lot of people. I think there is actually a reason behind this, I think. So firstly, they're fluffy, right? And us as humans, we love fluffy stuff. Um, and we have this like intrinsic need to touch things that are fluffy. Um, but it's their faces. It's like dolphins. So, you know, they always look smiling and happy. This is a, why, a big reason of why I think we think that they're so cute, because they always look smiling and they always look happy. Um, that's a really big thing of why we think animals are cute, I think. Awesome. Um, do sloths show any interest in other animals? No. <laughs> they, uh, well, they, if they, in terms of if they don't like them, yes. They don't like monkeys very much. Um, monkeys can be so mean. Um, I love monkeys, but they're not very nice sometimes. Um, and they'll bully the sloths. Um, I've seen it happen. So they, they probably show dislike towards some animals, um, but I don't, I don't think they really like other animals. That's fair. All right, we have yeah. one last question that's been typed right. in. And then girls, if you have follow up questions, I will send an email out to everybody with some follow up information after this event. And I will give you um, an email you can reply to to ask any questions that you didn't get answered tonight. So the last question we have is why do three toed sloths swim better than two toed sloths. Um, there is a, a few kind of reasons for this. Um, they both can float effectively because of their gassy stomach, which is full of fermenting leaves. But I think the main reason, firstly, three finger sloths have longer arms um, and shorter feet. So they, and they kind of do like a breaststroke. So it's like this. Um, so they're quite good at, with their arms because um, they're all gangly. And I think the biggest reason is being able to keep their head above water. So all mammals in the world, so you can you see here, you know, in your neck, you've got seven bones. So these are called cervical vertebra and we have seven. Every mammal has seven, except for the manatee and sloth. So manatees and the two finger sloth, they have five. So it's two less than every mammal. Now this is good for the two finger sloth because it means they can stick their head back. So it's like at an angle and they're looking behind them. So that means they can kind of spot predators without moving but the three fingered sloth have two more. So they have nine vertebrae in their neck. Um, it means that they can stick their head really far out of the water. Uh, they can turn their head 270 degrees, which is again, great for predators. Also great if you're looking for some new leaves and you don't wanna have to move. So they have more vertebrae in their neck than a giraffe does, which seems weird, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, I think it's mostly because they can stick their head so far out of water that it's much easier for them to kind of keep their head above water. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for answering all of our questions. And I know that it's getting really late for some girls <laughs> on the East Coast. It's not as late in Alaska. Um, but thank you so much. And I will make sure to follow up with all of you girls. Thank you for attending. Um, so that if you do have more questions, we can get those answered for you. Thank you so much, everyone. I was so, so grateful to be able to talk to you guys and I hope you learned lots of cool things 
and want to love and protect sloths and lots of other animals as well for forever um but yeah thank you very much and please all stay safe and healthy and if you do have more questions um send them over to miss kelly and i promise to get back to you um but yes thank you so much everyone it was so nice to talk to you